every business and every entrepreneur realizes at some point that they can't do it alone, that they need other people to help them, or they need to find some way of replicating themselves because they just do not have enough time and they want to take it to the next level. If you are wanting to take your business to the next level, you are going to have to start putting in place procedures and policies such that you can either outsource or get other people to replace and do the activities that you are doing now. This means you're going to be creating policies and procedures that articulate and share all the step-by-step -step processes and procedures that have got you to where you have got now, such that if someone else does those same things, they will get that result. One of the things that I find with all my work with entrepreneurs and business owners around the world is that they would like to step out of their business more and more so that they could either spend time traveling, spend time with their families, or to open up other businesses. But to do that, they have to make sure that their business can run without them. And that means you needing step-by-step -step guidelines, which we call the standard operating policies and procedures, such that someone else can do what you were doing in such a way that produces the same result that you are wanting in the least amount of time with the most amount of productivity and optimization. That requires policies and procedures. And I'm just going to share with you how I created mine in my school, my education environment, my school education, which was a new innovative approach. And I needed a way to, to, to share this with people as our school grew from just starting with four children to over 100 children, 250 children. And of course, as our staff number grew from just four of us to, at startup to well over 30 as we grew. And we needed a way to share that information, share how we were doing things and keep our promises to our parents, which will be your clients, that you can give them the result that they are asking from you. I'll see you on the other side. So I learned this the really hard way. Way back in the early 2000s, I had qualified as a preschool teacher and I wanted to start my own school. I had an idea, a vision of how I wanted it to run, the way in which we would design the curriculum, the way in which we would engage the young children such that they could actually develop into incredibly empowered human beings. And we would also include the parents and obviously empower the teachers through very specific training that would unlock the potential of what we call synergy schooling. In that first year that um, we started the school, I went through four different secretaries. And the mistake that I made was as the school principal, I hired a secretary and I said, well, your job is a secretary, so do what secretaries do. I mean, you should know, right? You are the secretary. And we went through four different secretaries until we found out that it wasn't them that was the problem, it was me. I was basically just saying, you need to do what you need to do because you should know what you need to do without really giving them the framework, the insight, the policies, the understanding of what it was that I required. How do we enroll the children? How do we communicate with the interested parents? How do we deal with latecomers? How do we deal with parents who are paying late? How do we deal with children and their behavior? How do we deal with taking responsibility for children in aftercare? All these things had remained in here as a an idea or as a process, but when someone new came into the school, a new staff member or a new teacher, there was a void. And how did we upskill that new staff member in such a way and in such a short amount of time that they could actually integrate both within the culture and the vision of our school, as well as um, be brought up to speed so that they themselves actually felt comfortable and competent. One of the biggest challenges of any new staff member in an organization is they are unsure or not sure of how to fit in or what they need to do. Different organizations have different procedures, different insights, different cultures. In other words, how they interact. What is the, the vision of the company? What are the, the shared understandings? How do we engage? Do we resolve conflict? Is that actually a policy of a company or is that just something which just happens by the by? All these kinds of things need to be taken into account if you, as the entrepreneur business owner, are really wanting to take your business to the next level. It was very easy if the staff a number of the number of staff in my school were just four: myself, a teacher, the secretary, and perhaps a groundsman. We could we actually started our school with five children, and in that way, it was very easy for us to transfer these insights and knowledge from one to another. 
The challenge came was when as we grew and hit the 50, 70, 80, 90, 100 children and we needed to employ new teachers and new staff members was how to transfer and transmit that knowledge such that they could actually feel really uh, empowered and hit the ground running in such a way that it, uh, the implementation of our school philosophy was done um, appropriately, correctly, and was what was expected because the parents had were obviously paying for what we were saying we were doing. The same way that in the world out there, in the corporate world, a client is expecting a certain service of a company. And whether that staff member leaves or is replaced, they expect and demand that same service. There needs to be a consistency because with consistency, trust is formed. With trust becomes predictability. With unpredictability, we can create certainty. And out of that, there's a sense of uh, loyalty and of continued relationships. And continued, uh, uh, continued um, relationships with your clients is going to be a greater income producer than just once-off customers. So we're actually wanting to create long-term relationships, and that's going to come down to the quality of that relationship. So any company... And this is where when I work with a lot of business owners and entrepreneurs who get to a point where they realize that they are the bottleneck, that they hold all the information and that they have to continuously step back in to micromanage certain situations because either a staff member has left and therefore has left a void or a new staff member might have joined as an addition but doesn't yet know what to do and it takes a long induction process. In other words, it takes a long time for them to reintegrate, learn the ropes and then get going. And one of the things that you will see in any successful company that as they grow in is the development of their policies and procedures such that they can be replicated regardless of who is implementing, implementing them. If you take a look at a franchise, a franchise out there is an exact process of what we're talking about. A franchise is a system, a series of steps or procedures such that if you implement them as instructed, you will get the result that the franchisor is promising you. If we take a look at all the major shops, take a look at Starbucks, take a look at um, Seattle Coffee or McDonald's hamburgers. There is a very specific way to make all of those products. The McDonald's hamburgers, and I'm not judging if it's good or bad food, I'm just saying that the process, a franchise, the process to make, the, make those hamburgers is so specific to the exact degree, to the exact second of how long those fries stay in the oil for, that if you just replicate that around the world, no matter who implements it, you're going to get the same hamburger around the world wherever you go. And that is exactly what the standard operating procedures and policies is set out to create. When I started my school, the idea was is that, that these policies could be transferred such that any teacher could step in and actually create this incredible result that we were wanting from our school. And in many cases, from, from my side personally, it was because I didn't want to stay as the managing component of the school. I wanted to step out and focus on the big term vision and of course that creation of an incredible education system that empowers both parents, children and teachers and makes it something which is truly unique. So in that process, we realized that we needed to put down on paper the processes and policies that would actually govern and cover all the different kinds of scenarios that we would encounter. And the idea behind, behind this and what I wanted to share with you is not so much to articulate what all those policies are, because that is going to be dependent on many different companies and what they're doing. But the idea around it was how do we centralize and collate all the different policies so they're kept up to date, but they can be accessed by all the different staff members and importantly, really outline and ensure that if implemented correctly as designed, then that staff member would be able to fulfill on their job description. You know, the life cycle of a staff member can be in, in, incredibly small. In other words, they can join and a few weeks later leave, a bit like the scenario of the secretaries. Um, who joined my school in the first year. And that could very well be is because they feel out of their depth. They feel they, they may feel they do not have the support, they do not have the relevant training, and therefore if they feel that way, they're certainly not going to stay. So we again realize that with the increased support structure through our policies, procedures, and standard operating processes, that staff members could very quickly be brought up to speed or could know where they need to go such that they could find an answer to the question that they're really needing at the moment. 
So in many ways, what I'm just wanting to share with you here is, again, the importance for you as the business owner to understand that wherever you are and whatever business that you're in and at whatever stage that you're in, this is in applicable to you. Whether you're a solopreneur, you're the only one who's doing everything, well, this is especially applicable to you because otherwise you are going to be managing every kind of process and there is a time there will be a time at which you will want to level up step up to the next level and to do that you will need to be able to pass on the content and the process and the way to do things that is in your head for you what might seem obvious is not going to be obvious to someone else that's one of the biggest mistakes that entrepreneurs do when they delegate something out. They think that just because the marketing agency says they handle social media, that means that that um, company knows what you're wanting out of your social media marketing. Uh, and this really is what we're wanting to do is you're needing to extract that information such that someone else can follow it and uh, create the result as close as possible to you. Doesn't necessarily mean that someone can do it better than you because you have created a certain success to get where you are at this moment, but it does mean that you can come as close to replicating yourself as possible. And that is what we're wanting. You know, in many cases, um, people say you should start a business getting ready for it to be sold. And if you're wanting to sell a business or pass it on or pass it on to your children or um, you know, uh, step more and more out of the day-to-day -day activities, you're going to have to make sure that everything is running smoothly. Because people come, people go, new staff members apply, staff members leave, whether it's maternity leave, parenting leave, um, they tire, they retire. All of those things point to that someone else is going to take that over and they're going to need to be brought up to speed and know the how-to things happen in your company. So over time, coming back to my story, in my school, I started writing down and articulating what it is that we're doing and needing to set that up. And in this scenario, uh, if we take a look here, you can see that I started creating a lot of policies around every aspect of the school. I'm no longer in education, so this was around 2005 to 2008, and it really, we had to look at emergency procedures, enrolling children, what happens if children are sick, what happens if there were baboons on the property, because where my school was, we had a certain amount of wildlife that actually was in the area. Through to if children wanted to skip a grade, if parents were going to go away for six months, as you can see, a whole lot of different things. If, like, how can someone apply for leave? How do we um, uh, close off an account if a parent was leaving? What is our behavioral guidelines policy? All these different things were really important for us. And although we put them all into one central place so that it was always updated, the risk around this was a staff member would say, I don't know how to search for it, and I don't know which is applicable to me directly. So out of that came obviously an insight into we needed to find out how to consolidate this as a library, right? As a way to search for something and find what's applicable to you. And therefore, this video is actually split up into two different sections. The first is actually just what do we mean by the policy and just for me to share that with you. And the second one was what I designed myself as a way to consolidate this, centralize it, and obviously make that incredibly powerful for someone to use, which is the second component, right? How do we use the policies? So in this case, let's just take a look at some of the policies. And one of the most important ones that are relevant to you today, even though this was in the school um, uh, environment, was the hiring of staff members. Now, it's how would we go about hiring staff members that would be falling or fitting into the legal requirements um, of, of staff interviews, as well as really support people in finding the right people for our business or company. And in that case, this was actually really, really one of the most important parts because it was something that we had to do on a frequent um, occasion is obviously hiring new staff members, whether it was ground staff, secretaries, accounting staff, teachers, assistant teachers, cleaners, sports, extramurals, all of those was what was really important. And in this case, I'm going to show you uh, what we set up as a staff interview process. And here you can see, for example, is what I'm going to define from now as a policy or procedure. In other words, this is how our school went around doing these, these, uh, this process, right? So the whole idea was is that if no one knew anything about how to do a staff, app, staff interview process or a new staff application process, if they came to here, they would be able to read through what was required, how they would set it up, how they would write the adverts, what questions to put in place, and obviously how to conduct the interview such that at the end, the right staff member would pop out. 
And that is really what it was. And as you can see here, this document is already 23 pages long, and it just really highlights all the different things that are important, especially the step-by-step -step process. In other words, from before the interview to during the interview, what is needed. And as you can see, it really was written like a step-by-step. -step. In this case, this was done in, um, in a Word document. In other words, uh, not through any of the modern-day apps that we have now. So this is already nearly 14, 15 years old. And in that, right, uh, if I was doing this again today, it would probably be done in, in a modern technology that would be a bit more user friendly. But if you actually understand this, you could literally print this and then just go through it um, as you need to. And as you see, this is just really saying set everything um, tick or step by step and tick it all off. And it would show you what you would need from, as I said, before the interview to the actual interview. How do you engage your interviewee? How do you speak to them? How do you elicit the information? What are the kinds of questions you need to ask? Those are very specific because very important. You need to write the ask questions. And of course, the different kinds of um, posts or roles that people are applying for. Uh, what was really important, as you can see here, how we had to... Uh, mark or, or, or measure the applicant's responses according to the criteria that we're wanting. Because remember that every role in your business or company requires different things. Do they require a different level of responsibility, a different level of um, uh, like initiative taking or, uh, or especially organization skills or articulation, as you can see, uh, service orientation emotional well-being. So, for example, we would say that our teachers needed a much better emotional maturity than, for example, our accounting staff. So a whole lot of this we would obviously put in place and how we'd measure it. And as you can see, uh, this is how we would articulate it. And perhaps uh, one little point I can share with you now, since we're talking about policies and procedures, is in an interview, always ask retrospective questions. So the difference between the two is, instead of saying, what would you do if someone in your business didn't like you, because anyone can just answer, I would do X, Y, and Z. That's a hypothetical question and answer and is very easy for people to not lie, but it doesn't reflect what actually would happen. We want to go retrospective. Tell us of a situation where you've been in a workplace where someone didn't like you. What was actually happening? What did you do? And what was the outcome? And in this case, for example, um, you can see a whole lot of questions according to all the different criteria that we're measuring. And these are the questions that we've actually put in place so that we can, they're actually all there. All you have to do is select which one you wanted for that person and you could ask it. So all the hard work is already done, right? And this guaranteed therefore the success of what we're doing. As you can see here, all of these things here, for example, team development skills. Describe to us an example of where you have managed a group of people in such a way that your participa participation and input directly result in the goal, the goal being achieved. You know, team development skills. If that's you as a leader and I'm wanting you as a leader in the team, here it is. Retrospective asking, what happened? What did you do? What was the outcome? These are the kind of questions that are important. So if you can see, instead of just saying, interview this person, we're actually giving them exactly what they needed. And based on this, we're going to get the result that we're wanting. Here is the whole section on focus questioning, which is what I just shared with you. And as you can see, if we're going down all of this, we're going to get the result that we're wanting. Even, for example, maintaining an applicant's self-esteem. In other words, if you're managing uh, this applicant, and sometimes you might actually have a staff member who is 19, 20, 21, and is nervous and has never actually maybe had a job before, and they're incredibly nervous, well, how do we actually maintain their self-esteem? Because you know, they might be really scared. So all these different kinds of things, again, like I mentioned, are specific to creating success. So there's a good example of a policy, right? So there is an example of a really solid um, example, right? And maybe what I'll do is I'll show you another one, which is a really important one coming back to um, the school scenario, which is the enrolling process. As you can see here, here we have the enrolling process, which was really, really important to ensure that the experience of the child and the teacher was what we had wanted to create, which was very specific to our school. And what was really great is the secretary literally just had to print this form out and just follow it just like that. Tick off, done this, tick off, done that. You know, if they hadn't got the contract from the parent back, it would be a gap and they would need to obviously be reminded of that. Uh, tick it off, sign it, go through it, 
And of course, everything was therefore sorted out from all the different organization or all the different uh, uh, departments in the school would obviously be updated and know that. And at the end of the time, when everything was complete, would come and sign that off and I would sign that off. And basically all I was doing was checking that everything had been ticked off and done and completed. And that made the massive difference around it, right? So, so there again, you can see that's what we're referring to as the policies. What happens if a teacher leaves? How do they hand over their work? All of that, again, needs to have your step-by-step -step procedure and policy, which is really important. And that thing brings me to what happens and how do we collate this into a document or a, or a form, I guess, some way that a teacher or a staff member can actually search and find a way to make this work for them. And I'm going to share that with you now. I think this is probably one of my greatest um, kind of greatest uh, solutions to a problem that plagued us and uh, came up with a really clever scenario. So back then, uh, I was playing around with uh, database or M Microsoft Access, which is a way of creating databases. And I created a database that would have a whole lot of information. And of course, it would allow for such a library. In this case, uh, what would happen, and this is just a way for you to share, I needed a way that would allow someone the background information on the policy as well as a link to the policy so that a specific staff member can just get the policies that are important to them and this was really important we need to be able to tag them in other words just filter out what is just relevant to them we also found a way that uh, you could quickly access a policy what was the current one what was the most up to date and i guess nowadays that's mostly standard but in this case this is how we did this so here was a policy, you would open up this, this basic page and here you could actually scroll through all the different um, policies and procedures. You can see there, there's even one of baboons on the premises. And if we just go back to what we had already looked at, let's go back to the staff interview. You'll see here if we go down all the way, we're getting there, hold on, here we go. The staff interview and application process. If we go to that, you can see what it pulls up here is it pulls up some background information of it. And this information is relevant to parents, right? So this is, we basically explain stuff to parents. And in this case, as you can see here, this is relevant. We tagged it as the principal and the school manager need to know this policy. Down here would be the link to that actual policy. So if I clicked on that and I said, yes, as we have noticed, it would pull up that specific um, policy that you and I have already looked at, right? Uh, if we wanted to uh, look at something else, so let's say, actually, let's take a look at the baboons on the premises. That was just, it comes up again. So here we go, baboons on the premises. Here is information that obviously parents would also need to know. And as you can see, it's actually tagged all the different roles that the school have from co-teachers, bursars, core teachers, co-teachers, principal secretary. In other words, it was all in that that space right and of course there is the document that it would link to is what do we do if a um, baboon is on the premises uh, we saw if we want to look at enrolling we can also take a look at the en enrolling procedure for children and as you can see here there are a lot of different policies that resulted from the secretary to the staff teacher in other words there's the teacher component knows what does a teacher do if a new child enters in and of course all of this is um, linked specifically so this really created a really great way to say here is what is needed and then that actually became an incredible resource but what was actually incredibly useful as well is in this case if we had a new staff member who joined I could actually say I have just the the uh, uh, let's say a co-teacher joining and I want just the policies for that staff member. Not everything, just what they need. And in this case, what the database did, that said, show me all the ones where I've tagged for the co-teacher and print that out. And as you can see here, here would be all the different ones. This is, uh, it looks like there's, okay, co-teacher looks like it's a, um, let's just go back here. Uh, whole lot, just, just zoom this out a bit. As you can see, behavioral guidelines. So this has, I can't quite see how many pages, it's got it, 34. So it has got 34 um, pages of processes and procedures relevant. Of course, they can find it in the actual database and on the policies, but this thing is specific to that. And as you can see, it's also got the links. In other words, how do you do it if it's got a birthday on the premises? Because sometimes people wanted to hire it, right? 
Um, if we keep going through, you can see here how to enroll children. This is what the co-teacher needs to know, not the secretary, not uh, the teacher, but the co-teacher needs. In other words, this is what is relevant to them. So we could actually target this just for their role. And that, that was obviously really important. As you can see there, you know, it's just lots of, of exactly how this works, what it works and what's there. So that would be then, as we said, for the co-teacher. Obviously, if you chose a different uh, role or a different applicant, then they would find that. And what we found that this was absolutely incredible because when someone joined, what we did is we printed this out and said, here is your A to Z, right? Your library of policies and procedures. Please read through them and familiarize yourself, yourself with them. So before they even started, they already had a, an incredible a thorough understanding. But we know that that's not going to be a long-term process because you're going to take in all this information and it's obviously not going to be there um, for a long period of time because you're going to forget half of it. So it was a way, how do we keep reminding them? And in this case, actually, we integrated the to-do lists with actually the A to Z so that all of our staff members got actually reminded of certain things to be done at a certain time, which linked directly back to the policies, which was actually really, really great. Um, that's a whole different conversation for another time. I certainly do think that companies need that. In other words, if you have a policy, what's the point of the policy if it's not implemented? Because how do we take a policy and implement into day-to-day -day practice? And there needs to be a link between those two that can self-regulate and manage. And that for us was really important. In other words, if, if you have a policy about uh, writing reports for your staff members, or you have um, like your, your key performance indicators because they need to be appraised at a certain level, well, your policy is going to say certain things and that has to link back to the individual roles that that policy relates to and how is that correlated and is there a way to actually implement it and hold that policy accountable to actually be implemented. So, for example, if the appraisal system is, is that in the second quarter, the, the reports need to be written, is that automatically inserted into the calendar with a completed tick box that therefore relates back and says, yes, the staff member has fulfilled on their requirement to complete this policy. And that is what we integrated. So myself as the principal, very quickly at a touch of a button, I could see who had not done whatever they needed to do regarding all of the different policies and procedures. So you can imagine that I was no longer micromanaging. The process and system was actually managing the staff members in many, many ways. And that just made a massive difference. Um, as you can see, even here, there's, as I mentioned, it could say, okay, let's export the calendar, the year calendar that all these policies have dates and integrate into. And that would do that and therefore integrate it into their Google calendars or whatever. So that, that would actually would correlate and therefore, therefore would know that. So they didn't have to go and take all these policy details and implement it. It was done all automatically, which was absolutely fantastic. Here, for example, was the situation I was referring to you regarding the reports. So reports needed to obviously be done at certain times because obviously we were assessing children and managing that. And I had said that we could insert this automatically into the calendars. And in this case, as you can see, it, it included all these different people. And then we would obviously open the calendar. And as you can see here, it would um, have what was needed, what different roles were required and the dates and times of when this would be in place. This obviously is still set for, um, as you can see, actually 2011, because um, I sold the school uh, and this is just my backup copy. And then this would obviously be implemented. And as you can see, that would be the term one. Uh, uh, and then of course we would have term three or term four or whatever those relevant dates are. So there's just this understanding again of how we actually are integrating this these policies into a day-to-day -day structure. But again, the most important thing in this scenario was actually understanding you have policies to do, policies to write, such that actually this organization can run without you, without you having to go and tell people how to do everything. That's where the main game changer is. And in this scenario, as I said, here we go back and take a look at a whole lot of the different policies. And my suggestion to you is what you do is you first start off with the main policies that you've got. Create a list of all the things that you do, the to-do lists, as in from a, from a top level, and then you start creating the drafts 
and then obviously start articulating them. This, I does, this, I, these policies kind of grew and created a four to five year process. Every time we came across something, we realized if we really want to grow, we have to step back and um, document this in such a way that it can be repeated. It was never my desire to stay as a school principal. And the moment I sold it, I realized that all this work had actually been um, well worth it because this is what created the continued success through it.